Welcome to lesson three of the implementation of iPads into the classroom. This particular lesson is going to show you how um, a program called Reflector works. Now you've been able to see through some of the other videos that I have posted that I've used this program called Reflector. Um, this is a very unique tool to use. I have just recently found out about it and have fallen in love with it. I love its features. I love what it's going to be able to do for my students in the classroom. But let me show you actually, if you're interested in looking for this program, how to locate it and how to use it. First thing that you're going to do, you go to the internet. And I've already pulled up the site for us. If you go to reflectorapp.com, it will bring up this particular website for you. Now, what I would do to start with, I wouldn't, it is a program that does require a purchase. The program does cost $12.99 and they do actually have a bundle package um, to have five computers registered for $54.99 or a price like that. But what you can do to play around with it at first is you can actually excuse me, download a, a trial version. If you click on the download button, you'll see that it's starting to download down at the bottom of my screen. And it's just a regular download process like that. Now, with the free trial version, what it can do is you actually have unlimited access to it. However, it's only for a 10-minute period. After 10 minutes of use, it shuts off automatically. So, you may not be able to utilize it for everything that you could possibly need in class. Um, and I will kind of give you some, uh, some examples here momentarily of how you could utilize that in the classroom. But once you have downloaded the app, <coughs> downloaded the software to your computer... Um, you can start enabling it with your phone. So let me show you what we need to do from here. When you download it, you are actually going to download it down into your applications. You click on your applications. You will scroll down, and you can see that I have Reflector here. So once you click on it, at the top of your screen, you can see that you have the Reflector program set up. Um, now what you're going to do here, you have to make sure that before you actually can use it is you have to be on a Wi-Fi connection for your computer itself and for your iPad or your iPhone device. They both have to um, be on Wi-Fi in, in order to work with the different signals so they can pull together and use the mirroring image. Now what we can do, um, you have different options here. You can and we'll go through some of these in a minute, but you can actually make everything that you see on your iPad or iPhone a landscape feature, which would be the long way, a portrait feature, the tall way. You can actually change your phone background from, background from black to white. You can enter a full screen view in just a minute. Um, but let me show you how you actually set that up. Now, this is, the only, this is the only time in the video that you're actually not going to see what I'm doing and how to enable it, but I can walk you through it. It's a very short process. If you'll take your iPhone or iPad, and if you double-click on the Home button, you should be able to see all the most recent apps that you have clicked into. If you slide everything to the right, you'll see where you can have your music options. If you slide one more time to the right, you can see where you can adjust the volume. And now at this point, you should see a little circle with a rectangle in the middle and a little triangle. That is called the AirPlay feature. When you click on that little button, you will have a pop-up on your screen that says AirPlay, and it should say iPhone and then whatever your MacBook um, software is or whatever. If you click on the MacBook software or whatever your computer's name is, it will then bring up another drop-down feature that says Mirroring. When you click, click the Mirroring on is when you start seeing what you see on your screen now. At this point, I have mirrored everything that you see from my iPhone directly to my laptop. Now again, this is where you can start playing with some of these features. If you choose to, you can make it a white background. Um, not a big deal. You can make it a half-size feature, make it a little smaller. You can make it an actual size, make it really big. I think that's a little too zoomed for my liking. I like the stretch to fit feature. It takes up a fairly good um, space on the phone. Then once you click done and back down, you're straight to seeing everything that, that I do on my iPhone. It's exactly how I would see it. You can, if you choose to go into the internet or something, if you turn your phone sideways, 
it will actually do exactly the same thing. It'll go to the landscape feature. Now, if I chose to do this, I could come up to device. I could come down to forest landscape, and it would stay that way. And when it would stay in the um, forest landscape feature, the way, whichever way I do it. Now, you did see that it did jump a little bit. That's because I switched it from the right side to the left side. But the phone is always staying in the landscape feature. I don't have a particular preference for that. Um, I just usually do the automatic orientation. That is where currently it's in my hand sideways. Now I just turned it up and it's just going to adjust to however the the program on your iPhone is working. But that is how you actually set up Reflector. Again, I said it's a $12.99 program or $12.99 program. Um, I think it's an excellent feature. Some some of the things that I would like to utilize this within my class is if I'm on Study Island, for example, and I've got a student who's working on a problem, maybe adding fractions together, and that student comes up to me and says, Mr. Murray, I don't know how to do this problem. Well, what I can do is I can stop um, whatever whatever's going on in class, and I could reflect what's on my what's on my student's iPad or iPhone, and I could project it up to my smart board, and then I could actually take and use that problem um, to help my students solve that particular problem in class. That way, every student is seeing how the process is going to be done. Because if one student's going to have that question, there's more likely going to be other students that have that same similar question. But by doing it that way, the kids are seeing the real problems that they are actually working on their own. So I just think it's a fantastic feature. Um, I, would, I would recommend at least downloading the free trial version, see how you like it. But again, you have to make sure you're on a Wi-Fi connection with your computer and your iPhone. And unfortunately, it does have to be done with a MacBook or a MacBook Pro. It's got to be an Apple product. Um, it's a very Apple-friendly software, so that is, there are a few limitations to it, but if you have the capability to set it up, I would highly recommend doing it.